So welcome to another episode of FIFA History. I'm taking a look at FIFA 23 today in 2024. I have not played this game since FC 24 came out, so it's time to come back and see what it was like. FIFA 23 had features like Ted Lasso, two World Cup modes, and some career mode new features. We're going to take a look at everything today. In terms of reviews, this game scored a 7 out of 10 from IGN, 76% from Metacritic, and 8.5 out of 10 from Well Played. 1.9 stars on Google, so it looks like a lot of people did not like this game. If you want to use the best players and dominate foot, you're going to need a lot of coins. Check out today's sponsor, MuleFactory.com, who offer foot coins with Comfort Trade. Use my link in the description and my code VAPEXFC5 for 5% off. So does this photo bring back the memories? That was the FIFA 23 wallpaper. Sam Kerr and Mbappe on the covers. The servers are still open for this game, of course, so you can play online if you really want to. I love how EA wants everyone to buy FC 24. It says, get EA FC 24 at a discount today. Mate, I've already got the game. There's no need to buy it again. So here is a look at the main menus. Pretty much the same as FIFA 22, I believe. You've got the Women's World Cup 2023, which was a DLC, and also the 2022 Qatar FIFA World Cup. We've got play modes there. We've got some sort of settings there on the right as well. If we go into play modes, it takes us into more little menus here where we can play crew mode or other little DLCs. Then we go to quick play once again, which shows us the practice arena and kickoff mode plus tournament mode. Let's take a look at the practice arena. EA sort of did a few little changes to the practice arena. The first one was the camera angle, so they put it into a more traditional gameplay experience camera angle, but you could change it back to a third person camera angle. Other than that, there's not really much you can do. There's some button help, skill move help. You can practice your free kicks and also your penalties. So yeah, this practice arena was still pretty trash. Not much to do here. Let's take a look at the EA soundtrack for FIFA 23. I do remember this song, Black and Gold. I think they sort of brought in um, some old songs as well, actually, now that I remember. Call It What You Want was an old song. Let me know if you liked any songs from this. Let me know your favorite song. There's Kids from MGMT. I believe that was an old one. Love Me Again by John Newman. That was from FIFA 14. The Knights by Avicii was there. So around June or July 2023, EA brought in the Women's World Cup DLC. And it had the normal World Cup tournament mode. It had a My Player mode known as Lead Your Country. It had a Women's World Cup kickoff mode and also the customized section. Stadium Australia was a new stadium that came in with the DLC, but it got removed for FC24. But what didn't make sense with this DLC was the fact that EA gave us other stadiums, but they weren't even in Australia or New Zealand, which is where the World Cup was held. Walt Stadion is a stadium in Germany. What is it doing in an Australian World Cup DLC? I don't know. This one here is not an Australian stadium. This one here is also not an Australian stadium. Yeah, I wish we didn't lose the Stadium Australia because we don't really get any Aussie stadiums in the game. So let's take a look at the Men's World Cup DLC. Unfortunately, we lose the FIFA World Cup tournament mode and all that, but we do gain the Euros now. So FC24 will get the Euro package. This one had FIFA World Cup Live, tournament mode, FIFA World Cup kickoff, online tournament, and some settings and customization there. There was only two stadiums in this tournament DLC, which wasn't very good, you know. It wasn't a good experience when you're missing half the stadiums. We only had the Lusail and also the Al Bayat Stadium. There were some nice match day presentations before the matches started in the World Cup mode. But yeah, say goodbye to this because uh, the next World Cup tournament, if EA ever does it for FC26, will be a generic mode with unlicensed uh, tournament names and all that kind of stuff. So... It's not going to be a good World Cup experience anymore. We will have to wait for FIFA 2K to come up with something. FIFA 23 was also the first FIFA game to feature a Women's Champions League license. There was one really cool club that got removed in FC 24, AFC Richmond. This is the club that was in Ted Lasso, the TV show. This club did feature all the players from the show. Some did have real faces as well. They did have Nelson Road Stadium, which I believe was the Crystal Palace ground but sort of rebranded into Richmond colors. And of course, FIFA 23 was the last next-gen game to actually feature walkouts and the full match day pre-game presentation. We don't even see these cutscenes anymore if you play on a next-gen console or PC. Ted Lasso was also scanned for this game, and he's also available in crew mode. We're going to take a look at that soon. Let's take a look at player crew mode next. You could create a player or play as a real player. This cutscene for player crew mode was probably introduced in FIFA 23. I don't remember seeing this in FIFA 22. So they did bring in certain cutscenes here and there in player crew mode. But ultimately, it doesn't really change the game too much, you know. It's just something you look at once and then you pretty much skip it every other time. They did change the menus for FIFA 23 player crew mode. So you had your stuff in the middle there, like some tiles. But all the menu stuff was at the bottom this time. The new thing for FIFA 23 was activities. So you could do things like greet your teammates and it would affect different um, personality stuff. So you could have Maverick personality, Heartbeat personality or Virtuoso personality. And then there's also the shopping stuff as well. But this is all menu based. One of the criticisms I had was the fact that you could buy a suit 
but you wouldn't even see the suit in the game. You could buy a bike, but you can't ride your bike. So they need some sort of open world, some sort of thing where you have a house, a neighborhood, and maybe drive a car around, who knows. But uh, yeah, if you buy a swimming pool, you're not going to really see your swimming pool anyway, you know. But this is just to affect your personality and get some personality points. There's also investments you can do once you start earning a wage. Let's take a look at manager crew mode next. The big new feature was the ability to play as a real manager. You could choose from different managers in the game, but not every manager from every league was available. As you can see, there was only one from France and he had a fake face anyway. Some English Premier League managers did have real faces. Even the Bundesliga only had one manager who also had a generic face. So yeah, it's a good feature, but it only is good if the managers have real faces. You don't want to be playing with these guys here with generic faces. It's not a good experience. You might as well just create your own guy instead. One manager that was featured in the rest of the world section was Ted Lasso. So you could use him in career mode as well as a manager. And you could also have AFC Richmond as a club in manager mode as well. In creator club in FIFA 23, you now had the option to customize a third kit. Once you selected a squad in creator club, you could also edit the individual players. So you could change the names, you could change their attributes, you could change their kit numbers. So it opened up a lot more customization, which was nice. FIFA 23 also let you play three minute halves now. Manager mode did get an upgraded menu. So at the bottom, you had your different tiles there. And in the middle was a bit of information. At the top was your tabs. It did feature a crew mode homegrown talent pre-order bonus. You could see this guy was the homegrown talent. EA doesn't give you the homegrown talent anymore, of course. Playable highlights was a new feature in FIFA 23 crew mode. I never use it. And uh, it's just one of those features where I feel like on harder difficulties, you just fluff too many chances. And you only get a certain amount of tries. After that, if you fluff too many, you're going to lose every game. So not really a fan of it. But for some people out there that want to fly through the seasons, this could be the feature for you. The tension meter was also brought in in FIFA 23 career mode when you negotiate. FIFA 23 also brought in these transfer cutscenes. So when you signed a player, you would see this cutscene of them walking into the club. Another feature was the transfer analyst, which was also new at the time. It just tells you if you did a good job or a bad job when you signed a player. FIFA 23 also had Volta football. I'm not sure if EA changed the gameplay for FIFA 23 Volta, but it seems pretty quick, seems pretty slippery. We definitely need a season four of Ted Lasso. It was such a good show. One of my favorite shows of all time, to be honest. Yeah, let me know if you have any memories of uh, FIFA 23. Look at that pass. That was terrible. Let me know if you still play FIFA 23. Obviously, it hasn't been that long since the game cycle ended. Came out in 2022, of course. We've still got the Frostbite engine, hypermotion technology as well. So it still feels very familiar. The same sort of uh, FIFA experience. Rojas is going to whip it in early, looking for Jamie Tart. He finds him. And Tart on the volley scores a magnificent goal. I feel like FIFA 23's gameplay is a little bit slower compared to FC 24. Things feel a little bit slower, which is probably better. Obasanya's got a lot of time and space. Zava back to Obasanya. And there's no one in the box to cross it to. We hold it up. We go for the chip instead. Oh my goodness. It's a goal. So very familiar gameplay, of course. Yeah, I did like FIFA 23. It was nice to come back and experience it once again. 